Just got out of Black Adam. It stars Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Pierce Brosnan and a bunch of other actors that I've seen in things, but I don't really know. This was a movie that I was very excited to see, believe it or not, because I have heard so much about how this was going to change the course of DC movies going forward. Of course, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has been all over the place hyping this thing up. The PR has been monstrous for this film, and I can't believe how much DC has broken my heart again. There are some really cool sequences in this movie and some really cool characters and I have to hat tip to Dr. Fate as a choice and the idea of bringing the Justice Society into the DC movie universe is pretty damn cool. Pierce Brosnan's Dr. Fate is fantastic. The character is just freaking cool. It's a magic wielder that can see into the future and has similar kinds of abilities that we have seen from magic users like Scarlet Witch and Doctor Strange, but there is just this fantastic look and feel to this character and Pierce Brosnan's kind of contemplative take on it all like he's just been around forever I really dug it I really liked what they did with Dr. Fate Dwayne the Rock Johnson is Dwayne the Rock Johnson in the Black Adam suit I mean that's basically it like if you like this actor if you like the types of performances that he does in other action pictures it's basically taking the rock and squeezing him into a superhero costume and letting him go. The other characters are interesting. Adam Smasher has the ability to grow and has things that echo a little bit of what Ant-Man did when he grew in his movies and also in the Avengers films, which was kind of cool. And there's this other character, Cyclone or Red Tornado. I don't quite know. And then there's Hawkman, who's got a great costume. And if you love the Hawkman comic books, it's pretty cool to see a, a Hawkman realized on screen to this degree. But I've said this for a long time, Hawkman is just a stupid character. It's just a silly character. Just the idea of somebody just being able to get around with giant hawk wings is just so damn silly. We've got hawk wings inside of an apartment battle, you know? It just, it doesn't make sense, you know? Like the costume in reality just doesn't work. Just these giant wings just look like they're going to bump and bash into everything and it's just gonna be like, oh, excuse me, pardon me, excuse me. Now that doesn't happen in the movie, but I just couldn't take my mind off of that. I just thought how silly this costume is. It's just ridiculous. Now the whole concept here is it's a Black Adam origin tale. We get the roots of this character who starts in this ancient civilization and somehow gets thrust into having these magical powers and then it gets captured for thousands of years and is then re-energized in modern day in the same country that has been oppressed for centuries by people looking to take control of this magical mineral that only exists in this country. And of course, Black Adam comes alive in present day. The Justice Society swings into action to try to stop this character that just seems very vengeful and destructive and all kinds of people are freaking out and there's lots of death all of these mercenaries that try to take on black adam get killed because he's ruthless and there are some interesting ways that black adam takes care of these soldiers he does tear them apart and throw them in the air and just brutalizes them and it's kind of fun to see a superhero unleashed like that for a little while but the movie kind of devolves into waves of exposition trying to shoehorn all of these characters into this picture and explain all of this backstory and how these actors and characters are interconnected and why they're showing up. Carter Hall, the Hawkman character, has all of this incredible technology, presumably has just billions and billions of dollars of wealth. So he's kind of like a Professor X meets Iron Man meets Bruce Wayne kind of character. And then he's got these crazy hawk wings that just collapse out like a giant umbrella. It's just so awkward when he just throws out his wings in the middle of a tiny space. It's <laughs> It's crazy. I, I just I can't get over that. And anyway, so what happens is there's big battles and lots of destruction and this family gets interwoven into all of this chaos, this freedom fighting family that is trying to win back the freedoms for its oppressed country. And there's this kid that can skateboard around and he's just obsessed with superheroes. And you'll see a lot of signage and a lot of connection, a lot of DC merchandise all the way through this, which drives me nuts. And honestly, that's what this movie feels like. It just feels like this tremendous this effort to merchandise 
the DC characters and cram as much of that information in. And it really felt like a distorted mirror image of what the Justice League theatrical cut felt like. But I enjoyed Justice League much more because to see them all in action together, to see Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and The Flash and Aquaman and Cyborg, I know those characters and I love them. I love them going into the theater. I don't love Hawkman. I don't even really know who Adam Smasher is. I don't know Cyclone or Red Thunder or whatever. She's got uh, nano machines and wind powers and stuff. I mean, they, they look like cool actors and they look like they were having fun with it, but I didn't have any connection. And that's what DC keeps doing. They keep throwing all of these different characters and all of this lore and all of this exposition into their movies, expecting that we're gonna show up and love everything. It's like, no, slow down. Let us get to know that they should have just made a freaking Dr. Fate movie. And Black Adam should have been fighting Shazam. He's tied to the Captain Marvel Shazam lore and mythology. And for whatever reason, I don't know if it was Dwayne The Rock Johnson putting the, you know, stopper on that and choosing to go in a different direction or whatever, Black Adam isn't meeting Shazam. And it's stupid because they are connected in the comic books and they share similar backstories and powers and it's just idiotic that there's no connection there. So this movie is a mess. It's a total mess. It's a, an emotionless mess. You just don't end up caring about any of these characters at all. There's some fun effects and it's got some ferocious kinetic qualities. And if you love the Zack Snyder slow-mo action stuff, there's you know beats that you can pull right from there. It's almost like a fusion of 300 and the Justice League stuff. But God, I just couldn't care less. I just... <laughs> It was, it was really tiresome for me. And I'm in the club. I love DC Comics. I've actually bought and read Justice Society Comics. I know who Dr. Fate is. And that was definitely the best part of this movie. Yeah, another swing and a miss from DC in the movie landscape out there. I don't know how this is going to do, but I'm uh, very excited to hear your comments and your thoughts about Black Adam. But for me, this was brutal. I'm giving it a 5 out of 10. I can't believe DC keeps doing this.